Holy Gospel according to St. John. After he had appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you no fish? They said, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they all knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He asked him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fashion your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace, my dear siblings, to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today's gospel is a story of building beloved community. In this addendum to John's gospel, this is the story of Jesus restoring his disciples and by extension, how Jesus restores each one of us. This is the third time you'll note that the gospel of John reveals Jesus to his disciples after the crucifixion. Remember the first time was Mary Magdalene in the garden. The second was when Jesus appeared in the upper room with closed doors inviting Thomas to see and touch his wounds. And here we find Jesus at the seashore, the shores of Lake Galilee where they were fishing. Each of these three revelations, those visited, don't know it's the Lord, at least not at first. This revealing also points to the fact that the disciples, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, had returned to their former vocations. They were fishermen. 
And so we hear, I'm going fishing, and they all come along. Ever since the appearance of Jesus the last time in Jerusalem, they seem to have given up on hope completely and gone home, back to the way things were, back to their previous lives and their jobs. They're no longer in Jerusalem, they're in Galilee, 80 miles from Jerusalem, where Jesus had last appeared to them. The disciples traveled that long road, because 80 miles back then was a long ways away. And then they're not even together here. There are only seven of them. So what does this mean? Obviously, the group has disbanded. They've gone their own ways, although there are some of them together. Does it mean that they've given up hope completely? Well, these were men who were despairing, broken, men that didn't know what the future held. So they went back to the way life was. As disciples, they needed a refreshing move. They needed to come again to the God who saves and claims them. And that might sound familiar to you because isn't that where we are sometimes? We need to be brought back to the God who names and claims us and spurs us to mission. We need to find out whose we are again. We need to be in the midst of beloved community. And sometimes hope fails and we just can't be there. So here we are at the break of day. Jesus standing on the beach and the disciples don't know who he is. Now he's not that far away. They aren't far from shore, but they don't know who he is. And so he starts to talk to them. And remember in John, words matter. So in verse 3, Jesus begins the conversation by saying, Children, you have no fish, do you? He uses this intimate word, idea, children. He doesn't call them brothers. He doesn't call them friends. He calls them children. It indicates that Jesus sees the vulnerability that they are experiencing. He needs to show them that just as we take a child and love and protect it, he is willing to do that for them. They need to know the love that he holds for them very deeply and that Jesus will protect them as one does little children. He is about restoring them so they can build the love of community. And then Jesus tells them after they answer, no, they don't have any fish, Put the net on the right side of the boat to get realigned in the proper place. That's what Jesus is saying to them, and that they will catch fish there. And when they follow his instructions, even though they don't know who this is, their nets are filled. This too is an act of love and, and of forgiveness, because they have been failures. As it goes, they ran away. They didn't know who he was, it seems. They hid in the upper room behind locked doors. They were afraid. They had not stood by each other. This band has disbanded. They've left the path that Jesus set them on and they returned to their old lives hoping to find comfort and ease there. They knew they needed to be forgiven, but they didn't know where to go. The catch they receive shows Jesus' forgiveness, a true act of love and grace, and brings them back into beloved community. This act of grace and love restores them. So here is Jesus meeting the disciples after all the ways that they've failed. They've run away, they've given up hope and gone back to their old lives. Here is Jesus meeting them in the same way that he met with them on day one. They were doing the same thing then. And he said to them, come and follow me. 
It was a way of refreshing them. He's saying, let's go back to the beginning. Let's put the net on the right side of the boat, and we will start anew. Grace and mercy, restoration. And it's at that point, it's at that point that Simon Peter, ever impetuous, says, it is the Lord. Tucks in his fisherman's smock, jumps into the water, swims to shore, leaving them all on the boat. And when they get to land, here he is, sitting with Jesus by a fire with fish and bread and being in concert with his Lord. Well, Jesus doesn't just stop there as they come up to shore. Jesus looks at them and says, bring some fish. Now, there's already fish on the fire, but it's Jesus' way to say, we're in this together. This is important that you bring your gifts and you combine them with my gifts and we move forward together. It's restoration again. So they bring fish and they join with Jesus and they break bread together restoration at the table. Isn't that what we do? Join together at the table to be restored. They sit down and they eat together and they share and they offer hospitality one to the other. Now that they've been restored, Jesus wants to point them in a new direction. And so he says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He uses Simon's full name and his title, Simon, son of John. Now that's interesting because I don't know about you, but in my experience, when someone uses your full name, especially when it's one that you see as an authority in your life, you know you're in trouble, or at least you think you are. And so I imagine that Simon thought he was in trouble here when Jesus used his full name and looked him straight in the eyes. But Simon had forgotten something that we often forget, that when our full name is used, it's not just because we're in trouble. Often our full name is used when it's covenant time, when it's a place where we are about to commit ourselves to a new place, to a new being, to a new calling. It happens in ordination. It happens at marriage. So Peter has nothing to fear. Jesus is about restoring him. And Jesus uses the detail of these questions to indicate more. Because the word that he uses for love is agape. That's a special kind of love. That's a love of fellowship. That's a love of complete union. It's not that philios love that is a brotherhood. He uses the word of agape. So Jesus is saying to Simon, do you want, are you so connected that you are united to me? We are in union. That's the question. But Peter doesn't quite get that. Simon Peter looks at Jesus and he answers with philios. He says, yes, I have brotherly love for you. Jesus doesn't argue the point. Jesus looks at Simon and he just says, feed my sheep. And then he asks him a second time. He says, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? Agape, fellowship, that deep abiding love and that union with Jesus. Absolute union together. And Simon again replies, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Brotherly love, filios love. And Jesus doesn't play with it. He just says, Well, that's okay. Feed the sheep. It's part of restoring it. Then, in 
the next verse, Jesus looks at Simon again, and Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And at this point, Jesus, too, uses philios. He uses that love of brother. And Simon, in the midst of that, is a little disturbed. And so he says, Jesus, you know that I love you more than all. You know I'm loyal more than all. He's starting to understand the real question. And so he says, okay, do the best you can. And he says, feed my sheep. He's restored. He is restored. A brother knowing truly a brother. Then Jesus says what we all want to hear. Now that you've been restored, follow me. So Simon and the others have been restored. They have been brought back into the fold. They are now back on the mission. Jesus has restored them. Take care of my sheep. That's what happens when you're restored to the Lord. Love one another, take care of one another, forgive one another, have compassion on one another, show kindness and tolerance and patience toward one another, show hospitality with one another. That's following Jesus. After all of the sin and betrayal that we too have done, Jesus says to us, do you love me? than feed my sheep. Jesus has finally brought Simon Peter and the other disciples back to where they began, right back to the original calling three years earlier. Jesus has said to them, now follow me. And as we witness this story, as we hear the call, we too are asked to cast our nets on the right side of to be in complete union with our Lord, to love and feed one another, and to follow him. All has been put right in this moment of reconciliation. We too are being restored. We too have a moment of new beginning, for Jesus has restored us to build a beloved community together. Be blessed, my siblings, and be a blessing to those around you. Amen.